Right. Good, because what's interesting is it says that I'm connected to that. Good evening and welcome to the April 21st, 2015 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you please take the roll? Miss, Mr. Wood? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Ms. Oglis? Here. Mr. McGee? Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Mr. DuPont? Thank you. And uh, just for the record, in the absence of Mr. McGee and Mr. DuPont, both Ms. Oglis and Mr. Bealey will be voting members this evening. The next item is the approval of minutes from the March 30th meeting. So moved. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Next item is a public hearing. Maine Life Retirement Community, Inc. requests a contract zoning amendment and preliminary site plan and subdivision amendment review for a property located at 15 Piper Road, Piper Shores Assisted Living. Oh, right. And uh, one more piece of housekeeping. Chase just reminded me. We've got two items that are tabled this evening at the request of the applicants. Item number seven. Patrick McBrady, 28 Parkway Drive, and item number nine, Burnham Village, LLC. Those are both tabled at the request of the applicants. So with that, we'll turn back to item number four. Okay. Um, <coughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you mentioned, this is a public hearing as part of the applicant's request to amend the contract zone for the subject property. Um, <coughs> Just by way of background, the original contract zone for this property was approved in 1997 to allow for the development of Piper Shores Retirement Community in the RF District. The site plan for the property has been amended uh, multiple times throughout the years, all under the pr allowed provisions of the contract zone, so it's been before the board for just a simple site plan <coughs> amendment or relatively simple site plan amendment. At this point, they are actually coming back before the board and ultimately the town council for adoption of a contract zone amendment um, to allow for uh, increase in building size, additional uh, units, um, and other requirements uh, that wouldn't otherwise be allowed for in the RF district. Um, as part of the review process, the board will be going through a site plan review and subdivision review of the application. Ostensibly, the site plan review provisions will govern the review process. Um, uh, where we're at in the process right now, um, the, the board is uh, conducting a preliminary provisional review and approval of the, of the uh, proposal uh, prior to sending the uh, recommendation back to the town council. As part of the review, the board is to uh, advise the applicant and council of changes to the proposed agreement necessary for conformance with the site plan review approvals. So at tonight's meeting, the board can either uh, adopt its preliminary approval for the item or request that the applicant come back with additional information if, if the board uh, so sees fit. Um, with that, staff has provided uh, comments on the site plan review elements, uh, as well as uh, peer review comments from Water and Kern with civil engineering review and Goral Palmer for traffic engineer review. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you uh, for further board discussion. Thank you. Uh, and I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Thanks very much. My name is Mike Tadamo Wieland. I'm a civil engineer with Face Barford and Thorndike. I'm here with Jim Adamovich uh, of Piper Shores and Ron Epstein, who uh, represents Piper Shores as their attorney. Um, great introduction by Jay. Thank you. Um, we were last here uh, before you in March for a sketch plan review. Um, the proposal is similar uh, with some, some <coughs> minor changes to the design elements of the site, and obviously the design is a little more refined than it was uh, a month or a month and a half ago. Uh, there is, uh, the, the major elements remain the same. There's still a three-story building addition um, to the 
uh, existing Holbrook facility, and that will feature parking on the ground floor and 30 additional assisted living units on the second and third floor. Uh, in addition to that, there's, there's going to be a standalone single-story arts building located um, sort of adjacent and south of the retention pond over there. Uh, as Jay mentioned, this, this requires, because of the additional assisted living units, it requires an amendment to the contract zone agreement. Uh, we're here before you uh, asking for preliminary approval. That will allow us to go back to the council for another public hearing on the amendments to the contract zone. Uh, and then we'll be back in front of you, uh, hopefully, on June 1st for final approval. Uh, so I, I will uh, take you through the major design elements, again, some of which have changed since you last saw it. Um, the existing site access off Piper Road into the sort of the parking area will be maintained. Uh, it will now just be covered by the, the building addition. Um, and in addition to that, a new vehicular access will be created off Piper Road to allow vehicles into this sort of reconfigured parking area, as well as uh, service vehicles to access the relocated uh, loading dock and solid waste compactor. So the, this solid waste compactor and loading dock today are located under the existing building. Unfortunately, it's right next to a, the, the primary entrance for people coming from the parking lot, so it's a bit of an eyesore, and uh, and also it's quite tight in there. So pedestrians walking through there um, are certainly uh, affected by it. So Piper Shores wishes to move it sort of to the west end of the site where there's much less activity and it can be screened a little better and, and it'll just be less visible um, in general. Regarding site access, we, we have met with the, the fire department. Uh, Captain Jim Butler reviewed the plan and, and found site access acceptable um, on, around the building addition. We did agree to continue to work with him on fire suppression um, inside the building as, as the mechanical design is furthered. We just didn't have details of, of that, um, details of the mechanical uh, systems at that time. Uh, the existing propane tanks, there's an existing 18,000 gallon uh, propane tank that's it's buried but mounded. Um, it's, it's sort of, it's exist, it exists in this area today, sort of on the south side of Piper Road. Uh, it's being relocated to the north side of Piper Road, sort of north of the retention pond, um, really for two reasons. But the bigger reason is to to make it less visible. Um, visitors to the site uh, coming down Piper Road it, uh, can see it. It's one of the first things they see, and it's, it's, a, it's a bit of an eyesore today. So Piper Shores wishes to uh, relocate it to just make for a more inviting uh, entry into the site. We're also taking advantage of the space that it's vacating to, to create some additional parking over there off the new access drive. Uh, the, next, the next feature that's changing is the community gardens. Um, when we were here in March, uh, we, we mentioned that the gardens would likely move or be reconfigured to, to allow us a little more flexibility in, in uh, our parking design. And at the time, we, we had shown a concept um, <coughs> for the gardens being re relocated in this infield area, what we, we call the baseball diamond. But, um, that was, um, I guess, not looked upon very favorably by uh, the resident gardeners at Piper Shores as well as the board. We heard several comments um, that perhaps pedestrian access wasn't great. And um, w when we studied it a little further, we heard a lot of voices at Piper Shores that, that wanted it to remain in place. So we were able to come up with a design that allows us to reconfigure it 11 out of the 35 garden plots will remain in place, and then 24 of them will be sort of reconfigured farther to the back. And there's an existing garden shed out there that'll remain that'll remain in place as well. So the parking I mentioned of several times has been reconfigured. Um, this this darker gray area on the plan shows 
shows the areas that have been reconfigured as well as the area under the building obviously has been reconfigured too from from the existing plan. The site today um, includes 282 parking spaces um, and they are they're designated for residents, visitors, and employees, and they're signed as such. Uh, and so we, along with Piper Shores, looked at uh, current <coughs> parking numbers, the current designations, and current demand, and came up with a, uh, a proposed parking design and parking plan that, that shifts those numbers a little bit, essentially. Um, there are 151 resident spaces on the site today, and when Piper Shores uh, looked at how many residents have cars on the site, um, they found that there are only 100, 100 residents with cars. 100 of the <coughs> independent living residents um, have cars. Assisted living residents do not have cars. Uh, so th there's a need for about 100 resident parking spaces on site. So we've taken the, the number of 150 and reduced 151 and reduced it by 10. So we're providing 141, and that's also to accommodate the residents over on Drake Lane in the cottages who will visit this area to, to take advantage of some of the, the activities or the accommodations over at the, over at the, the main facility here. So today, there are, as you can imagine, with only 100, 100 residents, cars and 151 resident spaces, there are a lot of empty resident spaces on site. So we've, um, we've uh, redesignated many of those as visitor spaces. So the visitor, number of visitor spaces will increase by seven. Um, the number of resident spaces will decrease by 10. And, um, and generally, the, the employee number will stay the same. I think it's 89 employee parking spaces on the site. So we've provided a, an analysis, a narrative analysis of this in the application. It's in a, attachment F and uh, a, a couple figures that show where uh, the, the different spaces are um, broken down by designation. Again, resident, visitor, and employee. And I, Jay pointed out in his, his comments that the numbers in the narrative are slightly different than the numbers on the figures. And, He's correct. I, I want to point out the narrative is correct. The, the numbers in the narrative are correct. The numbers on the figure um, were off by one or two. And so we'll provide updated figures uh, with our next submission. So I want to talk about stormwater a little bit. The site um, or the project is going to result in about 19,000 square feet of additional impervious area um, over what's there today. So naturally, that'll result in an increase in stormwater runoff uh, from the site. So to accommodate that, we're we're proposing to modify the existing retention pond that's on site. Uh, so it's going to be modified number one to meet current DEP standards for stormwater quality. Uh, it was designed and built back in the mid-90s, so it, it was designed under a, an older standard. And we're also uh, increasing the volume for uh, stormwater storage in, in order to reduce peak flow rates downstream. So we provided a report in the application. That report's also going to DEP. The, the stormwater is uh, governed by state stormwater law and uh, it, it's currently under review by DEP. Other utilities on the site uh, will include public water served by the Portland Water District and um, public sewer served by the Scarborough Sanitary District. Uh, site lighting, I'll touch on that a little bit. Um, again, because of the reconfigured parking, uh, many of the existing light poles out there um, will need to be relocated. So we, what we've done is we've provided a design with very similar spacing. Uh, the same poles and fixtures will be reused, uh, and, and really that achieves very similar light levels and uniformity ratios to, to what's out there today and what's going to be on the rest of the site. So we've also brought um, some 
or included in your application are some architectural uh, elevations and floor plans, and I've also brought a, a rendering, a perspective rendering uh, of the assisted living edition. So <laughs> it's probably hard to tell what's what's existing and what's the addition. Um, the the architect, uh, one of the major goals was to to have it have it match the existing architecture and and in in feel and in uh, aesthetics out there. So the existing building uh, is is located sort of on the left of the sheet here, and this the portion of the building with that white roof will be the the building addition. So as you can see, the colors will be uh, will be matched to existing uh, as well materials and and general massing as well. So again, we're we're asking for preliminary approval tonight, which will allow us to sort of continue on um, through the process with the council and and return to you again, hopefully June 1st for final approval. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about the application or design, and, and Jim and Ron are also available to answer any questions uh, that might be uh, up there, Ellie. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move on to board discussion, uh, we will open up a public hearing. And I'll just remind everyone that um, we ask you to come up, uh, identify yourself with your name and address. I'll try to limit your comments to five minutes or less. Um, please direct any questions or comments to the board, and then we'll address those through our discussion. And um, we welcome any input. <coughs> any takers? All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. And we will turn it to the board. Now, Ron, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I'm trying to catch up on some good things here. Let's uh, go over. I'm going to start with uh, the parking. Where is it? Um, because that you put out some numbers, but one of the things that caught my ear was you said that there was 89 parking for 89 employees, and that's going to stay the same. Correct. With the expansion, they're not in, in, in going to add any new employees. Let me reference the, uh, the so, so actually there's 87 employee spaces out there today. So uh, their their biggest shift, as you can imagine, is sort of the day shift, 8 a.m. to to 8 to 5 or, or thereabouts. And during that time, the uh, the maximum amount of employees is about 70 is 75. Um, or I'm sorry, today it's 70. They expect to add maybe up to five employees with the with the addition additional assisted living units. So that'll bring the, the maximum amount of employees on the site to about seventy five. So eighty seven spaces uh is adequate is adequate for that. Okay. So today they, they don't feel a pinch for employee parking and, and they feel what's out there is is adequate to meet the, the additional employees as well. All right. And then some of the concerns that we heard from in the past was the conservation land. Again, refresh my memory. Where are we in relation to that? How close are we, and and how does that come into the picture? Sure. So, uh, the the site this is referred to as the congregate area at Piper Shores is almost entirely surrounded by conservation area. And and when Piper Shores was originally developed, I think that was intentional. Um, to to allow development within this within this footprint and and to conserve some of the wetlands and and other sensitive areas. So the proposal uh, doesn't encroach into the conservation easement at all. There, so there'll be no encroachment into the conservation easement. There'll be no uh, wetland impacts associated with with the current project. And the last time you're here, I asked if you was any sort of uh, Communication with the abutters has that any of that taken place? Yeah, so we we did hold a neighborhood meeting, uh, and this was done back in oh I think it was December, uh, in which we explained 
um, the current, the, the essentially this project, which is the the uh, assisted living addition and the arts building. We explained that that would be coming through the town process. What kind of comments, feedback, pro con? Yeah, I would. I, well, at the same time, we we also. Um, we also gave them some insight into some, some long-term planning thoughts that we had that, that did include uh, impacts to the conservation easement. Those are obviously not proposed now, there, so I would say there was negative feedback related to that. Related to this proposal, I would say, I would say the feedback was generally positive. Um, I think there was an appreciation that we were, that the expansion was taking place within existing developed area. Okay. And you talked about uh, moving the gardens, but what I didn't hear mm -hmm. is, and, and you talked about the parking, is, is two things. One, the one of the concerns was the turning re reconfiguration. So has that been worked out as you've worked out these spaces as far as how things are going to flow? As uh, I'm sorry, as far as turning vehicular yes. access? Well, ve ve vehicular in one, and number two, the other th that goes hand in hand with that is the pedestrian flow, uh, especially where the gardens and so forth. So they sort of go hand in hand in my mind. Yeah, so it's intended that, um, so, so I, first I'll say the, the vehicular access and turning radiuses have been, um, I would say, designed to, to accommodate a wide range of standard uh, so pedestrian vehicles. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, standard vehicles. Um, as far as pedestrian access to the gardens go, they'll be accessed, um, today they're, they're accessed, for, if, for someone coming from this building, they would be accessed across this courtyard and, and across through here in front of the, the wood shop. So that'll be maintained. It's intended this will be, this will be fenced in because there's a, as you can imagine, there's a deer issue <laughs> out there with the, the adjacent woods. Um, so to keep the deer out, that'll be It'll be surrounded as it is today. Um, so there'll be two means of access. So one will be essentially where it is today. The other will be from this parking lot. There, there are residents who, um, as you can imagine, want to bring in uh, topsoil or, or materials for the for the gardening. So there, there will be access um, up in this sort of outer parking lot as well. Jay, um, for you, Jay. They're moving the uh, the gas tank LPG. Is, how does that sit with you? Is, is that something you've considered? Um, yeah, I think in terms of, as, as the applicant indicated in his introduction, right now it is a bit of an eyesore coming into the site, and, and so I think you know, staff's appreciative that it's going underground. They appear to have put some, uh, some effort into landscaping in front of that as well, so um, it seems to be seems to be a, a good move. I think in terms of, um, if I could just jump on your previous question, in terms of uh, um, vehicular movement throughout the parking aisles, one of the comments in our uh, civil engineer's comments was that the drive aisles don't appear to meet the, the, uh, the standard 25-foot width. Um, they may fluctuate around 24 or so, and, and maybe you could just speak to that item. Um, certainly that's an item the board could consider a waiver on, but. Um, at least we should recognize what that entails and what what is proposed. Sure. Yeah, that that's a good point. So, <coughs> um, much of the parking was uh, and and uh, access drive aisles were laid out to sort of match what's existing out there today, as well as to to accommodate um, the the ground floor and the columns under the building. So there are some areas um, that that are less than 25. Um, I think, uh, in terms of doing just that, matching sort of existing site conditions as well as uh, producing impervious areas, um, if the board was willing to, to uh, grant a waiver, that's that's certainly what we would be looking at doing. Um, if not, we we could look at. Uh, widening those drive aisles to the 25 feet. My last comment, which you probably can't answer, but it's more hypothetical than it is practical. Um, 
has a study been made that there's a need for this expansion? And I, the reason, before you even address it, if you want to address it at all, is that there's another facility, as you know, that just opened up in in Scarborough. And I know it's not apples for apples for the type of clientele that's being marketed, that I know. But the initial impression and feedback that I've received is that the, they're not, that the demand isn't there, and now you want to add at Piper Shores, and I'm just wondering if a marketing study had been done to, to say that this is needed, the expansion. Sure, yeah. Jim is certainly more uh, able to, to address that. Uh, good evening. I'm Jim Adamovich, CEO of Piper Shores. Um, we did do some marketing studies, a competitive analysis of the greater Scarborough area up into the Falmouth and Yarmouth area as well. Um, we believe that our market is slightly different than the, the market that is represented by uh, most other communities in the area. We anticipate at least half of the accommodations to be um, supported by residents that currently live at Piper Shores. So it is part of the continuum of care that we offer contractually to our residents. Uh, the community is approaching 14 years, so we have residents who have been residing in independent living for either 14 years or a fraction thereof. And the demand that we see for assisted living on the part of Piper Shores residents continues to increase. Related to that, every three years we do an actuarial study that includes population projections and uh, movement of residents through the continuum of care. And I think those population projections suggest that the number of units that we are proposing is, is an appropriate number. And then just to follow up on that, where those people are going to go into a different facility or part of it, you feel that there are other people that will fit into those locations? Yes. Yes. We have, at present, we have 90 parties on a wait list for independent living. Um, some of those individuals will, for one reason or another, opt not to, to move into an independent living setting. So we think in some respects there's a ready-made wait list that is part of that structure that's already in place. For some of the independent living units, there may be a six-plus year wait. So that blows my mind, but you know that's success, I guess. So, uh, so I'm going to pass now to some of my other Thank board you. members. Thank, Thank you. Ron. Thank you. Mike, I don't have much to add to what Ron just talked about. I think you did a good job of answering the questions that we had <clears throat> before. So uh, this addition is uh, just to clarify: is assisted living, not independent. Correct. Which supports your your uh, belief that no additional parking to for these new assisted living areas is needed. Correct. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious. Have you looked at? We talk about you know some studies that have been done, and every three years, I think I heard. But have you looked at this site? Do you see this site as offering, uh, and and if so, where additional expansion opportunities? Are we maxed out? Uh, certainly, we're, we're we're getting very close to maxed out. I mean, the this expansion of this assisted living expansion is being constructed mostly over an existing parking lot. So, um, I think certainly your more expansion uh, would probably mean building up over existing parking. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add. I mean, the, the, uh, you said uh, the stormwater retention was designed in the mid-90s, but it was probably later than that, was it not? I'm sorry? Was it later than that, you think, maybe? I mean, th I think it was, no well, the site was originally designed in 97, 96, 97, so. And you're relocating the fence around the stormwater? Yeah, uh, just on this one, on this sort of north side. And I think and I that's, that's the direction in which it, it'll expand. And then finally, I think I talked a little bit about the lighting, the new lighting. Uh, have you uh, discussed where it might add to any kind of light pollution going towards the uh, developed areas off to the, the right of your plan? I would say it's probably north. Yeah, so uh, there is a we did prepare sort of calculations looking at light levels um, for the proposed lighting. 
a, and the fixtures that are out there are, are pretty good. They're, they're 15 feet high, which is relatively low. Um, they feature good, pretty good cutoff optics. Um, they are, um, you know, they're flat lens, so there's no, there's no uh, light visible from above, that sort of thing. In addition to that, um, this part of the facility is, is pretty, pretty far from abutters and is screened by um, some, some pretty dense woods. So um, I really don't expect the, the lighting to, to affect any of the abutters. And there's no, uh, uh, is there any significant uh, reduction in trees or buffering in order to accomplish what you need to accomplish? Uh, there's there's some very limited clearing associated with the uh, with the propane tank relocation, but there will be some some landscaping added back in order to screen that. And then there's there's some minor clearing uh, sort of over in this area west of this new new parking and access drive, um, just to accommodate a, a slope back there. Um, but other than that, there, there's there's really very limited clearing of, of existing woods out there. And uh, just for the record, uh, I would be in favor of waiving the, uh, the access drives to the uh, less town stand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thanks, Mike. Roger? Uh, thank you. Um, just, a, just a couple of observations. I would agree with Mike on the, um, on the, uh, the drives. You know, waving that also because one thing you don't want to do is mix up the get the people mixed up about the width of wherever they're driving. Um, <clears throat> I was I took a ride down there today to look at the site. Uh, I've I've been fortunate that I've been down to the site on a number of occasions for meetings and everything. Just kind of curious. Uh, you have a great meeting room there, you know, uh, facility. And uh, it's my impression over the years, recent years, that you've been opening that up more to the public, um, letting the public use it. So, do you, are you taking that into consideration when you're, you're when you're considering visitor uh, parking spaces? Thank you for your comments about the community. Um, you're right; we have had more public events. Um, although we, we track pretty carefully the utilization of the community, I think one of the things to point out with regard to parking is that over the years the, the resident profile within the community changes as residents age. And so, for example, when the community was built, we projected about one and a half residents per independent living unit occupied. Um, supporting double occupancy rather than single occupants. Today, we are tracking about 1.28 occupants per independent living. So as Mike had indicated, we've only backed off about nine or ten spots on the resident count, but in fact, the actual utilization of parking on the part of residents has diminished more than that number that we've, we've adjusted for. That does permit more more spaces available for visitors. There are occasions where we will park by the Homer Cottage and the maintenance facility and transport people back and forth if there's a very large event, but that only happens um, a limited number of times per year. So I think overall um, the, the parking represents um, a balanced approach for residents, visitors, and staff. There are going to be a couple of occasions where we will run tight if we hold a particularly large event. But again, those events are limited um, uh, to just a few times per year. Uh, the other comment I would, I would have is uh, I, I think it's a good idea moving the propane tank because if I'm not mistaken, when you drive in, there's like a dirt road that goes, that's where the tank is now. Yes. Yeah. So that, that would be quite a big improvement, I think, in, in terms of the, um, the site. So I, I, I think it's going to look nice when it's all done, especially the main entrance, because it is confusing when you go in there. <laughs> yes. I'm all set. Thanks, sir. I just want to take a quick run through the um, 
staff report from 421, just to make sure that we've covered everything. I think we have uh, in this evening's uh, presentation by the applicant. Um, okay, G, stormwater management, given the scope of the project, it appears it will need to comply with the provisions of the town. Are we, are we contented, staff, with uh, number G, stormwater management, that that's up to snuff? Yeah, essentially what that will mean is there'll be a note that needs to be added to the plan that refers to the annual inspection and maintenance, okay. and so Good. there'll be some, some administrative paperwork. That's once fine. I just want to make sure that we're, this is our chance yep. to look at your sketch list. Uh, number E, pedestrian ways. Um, did we do anything about relocating the trail behind the arts building? Yeah, so <clears throat> this is... Um, Today it's it's just a mode. I mean, mm -hmm. this this is lawn area, and it's right. a, it's shown as a, a trail on a plan. But um, really, one can 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 freely walk through this area. So no no change is really required. Yeah. So we w there will be um, obviously a, a, an area to walk provided back there. Um, I know Jay had mentioned in his uh, memo that uh, perhaps. We should consider another surface treatment, perhaps uh, stone dust or or uh, mulch, and uh, we, we haven't discussed that internally, but um, we'll, we'll certainly take it into consideration. The question is whether we want to include that as part of the uh, change to the contract zone. Am I correct? I don't know that that would uh, rise to the level of a contract that. zone okay. question. That really I would probably sit sure. more at the site plan level. Okay. So Good. I think if the board has strong feelings on it, one direction or the other, it would be helpful to provide Next guidance. Time. But if you're comfortable with the way it is now and was originally improved, then that's um, fine as H well. lighting. Um, just the question about is there any going to be any building fixture mounted lighting? And it's on our. Um, package it is uh, I didn't see any currently it's didn't not um, currently there's there's none proposed the lighting I've shown um, was intended to light the the parking areas and so the vehicle as access so as of right now there there are none shown it, it could um, not be any and if there are going to be any you'll show them <laughs> exactly we that's not to say we, you won't see some um, during the next submittal particularly okay, perhaps for the the loading dock I'm thinking I'm they, just bringing they up things like that. that I was listening to and mm -hmm. didn't see addressed this evening and that's fine um, doesn't seem to be any problem with the design standards I mean you've met the um, you, you're blending what you're doing with what's already there, and that's very important. Um, I'm just interested in number M, preservation of historic and archaeological resources. The applicant's checklist submission suggests that it's not applicable, but while that may, found, that may be found true, we ought to provide some evidence for the record in this regard. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can. We just have this new ordinance, you know, all about historic preservation. Sure. It's important to us. Other than that, I think I'm very happy. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Uh, I really don't have a whole lot to add that hasn't already been asked or, or commented on. Um, I think the, the changes since the last iteration we saw are, are good, good ones. Um, appreciate the responsiveness to the board and, more importantly, the residents regarding the garden location and the accessibility of that. Um, I think you've adequately explained the uh, the rationale for your parking count and uh, trust that you know that's all uh, all part of uh, being good for business and sounds like you're you're well covered there. Um, like a couple of my fellow board members have, have said I'm fine with the um, the waiver for uh, the, the, the uh, parking width. Um, that's not something we're you know, technically act, being asked to act on tonight since it's really just preliminary approval, but for purposes of moving forward, I think, I think I'm hearing general consensus that people seem to be okay with that. Um, and that uh, sounds like, and I, I agree, that uh, the, the relocation of the, of the tank uh, is, a, is a good move. So we really don't have anything else beyond that. You've obviously got a couple more steps ahead of you. Mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime, I will move that uh, the board grant preliminary site plan approval to Main Life Retirement Community this amendment. Second. Do have a second? Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much.
they both had a Item number five, Go Green Landscaping <coughs> requests a sketch plan review for a proposed structure at 4 Royal Ridge Road. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as was just noted, uh, the applicant is before the board for a sketch plan review, development of property off Royal Ridge Road. Uh, the property is in the B3 zone. As the applicant's narrative and site plan depict, they're uh, requesting approval or discussion around 10,000 square feet of leasable office and warehousing space. Uh, staff's comments really focus on sort of the layers of zoning and process that are going to be required as this application moves its way through. Um, one of the things that the applicant uh, needs to be aware of is within the B3, warehousing is not one of the allowed uses, so I think there should be a little more discussion fleshing out exactly what the applicant's intent is in that regard. Uh, further, uh, understanding that Go Green Landscaping is the primary applicant and typically uh, landscaping businesses have uh, outdoor storage in terms of trucks, uh, property management equipment, trailers, uh, storage of materials, um, the applicant and board uh, should, could, as this goes through, again, outdoor storage in the B3 is a special exception use which requires Board of Appeals approval. Um, so that will be a, a necessary step uh, as the applicant works their way through uh, their, their reviews. Um, stepping back a little bit, the B3 zone uh, requires that parcels in excess of five acres go through, uh, development of parcels in excess of five acres go through a plan development review process. The plan development review process is a three-step process, the first step being a site inventory and analysis. Really, that's uh, ostensibly taking a look at the opportunities and constraints on a property, working with the natural characteris characteris characteristics, that was tough to get out apparently, and the, uh, the built environment. Um, it sort of establishes areas uh, that are suitable for development and maybe those that aren't quite as suitable. From that, the applicant moved to a, a master plan, which ostensibly is a sketch plan, lays out how development might function, uh, lays out street networks, utility networks, pedestrian networks, those sorts of elements. Um, and once that's approved, then you, you trip into the full site plan analysis where you start to get into details of stormwater, lighting, the actual types of trees that are being planted, and all, all the things we are accustomed to dealing with through a site plan review process. Um, and then, you know, just talking about sort of the layers of, of review that are involved, also in our comments, we just flagged that this area, again, being in the B3, triggering the plan development review process, which sort of talks about walkability and human scale of development. There's also the design standards that will be triggered uh, in terms of architectural rendering, or, or yeah, the architectural uh, detailing of the building, orientation of buildings, buffering of parking, um, location of overhead doors, and the like. So um, with that, Mr. Chair, I'd turn it back to you. Thank you, and I will turn it over to the applicant. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions, uh, here to present a um, sketch plan for Go Green Landscaping. Um, what you see before you right now is, a, is an <coughs> old subdivision. This lot, is, I, I believe, is land remaining of a subdivision that was completed in 1986. Um, the, the yellow line is the lot that we're working with. The, the orange shaded area is a drainage easement and uh, detention pond. Uh, that detention pond, for um, location's sake, is located behind the bank and lumber liquidators. If you went into the woods, the detention pond is, is right there. Um, it looks like there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done to get that pond back up to where it should be. Um, and that's, there, there's a bunch of questions surrounding that pond and, and who has the rights to that pond, and, and that's something that we're going to be looking into further. Um, so the, the lot is shown here is 8.9 acres, plus or minus. Um, the back edge is kind of a center line of a stream, so it kind of changes from, from survey to survey. But it, in general, it's about 8.9 acres. Um, the development we're proposing is 
the dark green area, which is, is probably about an acre to an acre and a half, somewhere in that area is the area of disturbance. Um, the green, as you can see on this plan, are wetlands. Um, one of the, the parts of the future process is to show kind of the site inventory. We think we kind of have a head start at this because, as you may recall, it was probably a year ago, a year and a half ago, we were looking at a um, conceptual plan for Esterbrooks to potentially move down to the same lot. Um, so we've done a lot of the work already, so we think we have a lot of the, the lay of the land already, so we think and we're hoping that maybe we can combine the site inventory with the, the master plan step, and that's something obviously we can discuss. Um, the wetlands here, this portion here, this portion here, those would be considered man-made wetlands. Those were dug ditches in the 80s as part of the, the subdivision, and, and the large green kind of trapezoidal shape at the bottom is the detention pond. Um, it was flagged as a wetland, but the wetland rules as stated is that they're man-made wetlands, so there's things that we can go in and maintain those for their uses as drainage ditch and detention pond. Um, there are other wetlands on the site, but with this proposal we're looking at impacts less than 4,300 square feet, so that's exempt from any permitting. Uh, the development would also trigger us into DEP stormwater, um, a permit by rule. There's not enough impervious to get us into the full storm, stormwater law, but it would be a permit by rule. We understand that we need to go to the ZBA uh, for special exception. Um, the building um, is going to house a significant amount of garage space for storage of cars and trucks and trailers and that sort of thing. But obviously, as Jay mentioned, with the landscape business, there's going to be outdoor storage of you know, loan bark mulch, that sort of thing. So we understand that. We're going to f factor that into design and, and work with the landscaping to screen that um, and, and make sure we meet our standards for special exception before the zoning board. With that, um, turn it back to the board with any questions. Thanks. Uh, Mike, would you like to start this time? Hmm. Hi, Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, where's the bank, uh, Lee, just so I can get my bearings? The bank is right here. Okay. The lumber liquidator is right here. Yeah. Um, well, this will be, uh, I'll, I'll first start with outdoor storage, and et cetera. Uh, I'll leave that up to uh, the experts at CBA to discuss that a little bit further. But uh, I know that this, this lot in and of itself is not visible, certainly from Route 1. Correct. Um, so uh, I think that's good <clears throat> when it comes to storing such things, that's all. Uh, what kind of businesses uh, would the applicant envision leasing those uh, those three other? Yeah, that's, so those are some garage space plus office space, so the envision is like a plumber, electrician, those sorts of businesses to fill those spaces. Um, the Go Green Landscaping is, is considering, depending on how this works, their move is they may end up taking over that building um, and not leasing any of those units, but they wanted the option, so they were going to start off with that option, with the, see how things go, but they're going to try to lease and, and probably use that as, as they go. Okay. And uh, uh, maybe a question for staff, it might be obvious, <clears throat> but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, any use? Um, that comes from leasing that must also comply with the restrictions that are inherent in the zone. Right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> lost my thought there. But um, the there's a when you go up, it's a significant uh, rise in terrain, is there not? As you move to the I'll, I'll call it north. It's probably west. I don't know. It's actually going this direction. It's, it's relatively flat. And we're running parallel to contours, but the increasing grade is up in this direction. And, and up on, on top of you is, is, a, is the Scotto Hill area, is it not? Yeah, the Scotto Hill, um, I think it's Pumpkin Lane. I'm not sure. I forget the name of it. It's not Pumpkin it's, it's up. It's up in this area. Okay. So uh, my, my concern would be, uh, given the activity, that you would expect from an enterprise like Go Green, I mean, whether there'd be un unusual levels of noise such as, you know, splitting wood or um, any kind of thing that might go on with a, um, 
that might be disturbing to a to a neighborhood that's not I don't I don't believe anyway too far away. Yeah. So I was just I'd like to wrap my arms a little bit around what kind of activity might go on uh, at that uh, location. Um, knowing full well, I may not be in a position to um, take anything away that the zone itself allows, but I think it's a good discussion that was passed and that we just be sensitive to that. Because I'm thinking that um, there's a potential for for some issues there, that's all. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it, really, though. Um, um, I think I've seen uh, the church, is the church, is there not at the end there? Yeah, the church is, is the church. Okay. And have you gone as far as knowing whether the uh, infrastructure that exists today, as far as the road network, everything else, can handle any additional? Um so it, Bill Bray is doing our traffic for us, and he's done a count right now. We're waiting for him to look at analysis on, and see what, if any improvements need to be made to Route 1 and or Royal Ridge Road. Um, there are There is sewer and water in the road, as well as electricity. That's, that's one of the uh, things that, that brought them to this site, is that there's utilities barely available. And I'm thinking that uh, I don't know if that church operates mostly on Sundays or outside the normal hours that you would think that uh, um, this this operation might operate. And this is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, would this be a situation where uh, citizens would go as retail customers to purchase materials or? I believe there's a very little of that. I think mostly it's there sending out trucks. They do a lot of, um, Trying to use the right word, green landscaping. They they don't use fertilizers. They use natural means, uh, and and that's kind of how they've built their their company. Um, I, I think they tend to come in. Workers can come in, get the trucks loaded up, and go off to do their day's work. So you don't think at this time it appears to be a more of a retail or? A I, I don't believe so. I think he does some stuff, but it's not on a large scale at all. all right. Okay. All right. I think that's it for now. Good warm up. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Right. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Liz. Yeah. Before. I give a couple of comments. Uh, Jay, is this putting the cart before the horse? In other words, the, the Board of Appeals should have been first and we're second, or is that irrelevant? Well, I think in terms of a sketch plan, this is an informal discussion, so that this is certainly an appropriate uh, step to take, and this is part of the point of the, of the uh, okay. sketch plan, is to highlight these issues for the applicant uh, who may or may not have been aware of, of that requirement. So I think we're, we're fine right now. I do think it's probably worth some discussion as we move forward in terms of the site inventory master plan discussion, Board of Appeals, review of outdoor storage. I, th I think there is a bit, a bit more ambiguity there as to which comes first. Where typically, if it were just a straight site plan review, they would have to have the Board of Appeals before we get to the site plan. But I think staff can work with the applicant and work through sort of, you know, maybe they can be sort of congruent review processes. And if one changes the other, then that's what we'll have to deal with. But we can we can work through that. Yeah, I, I was just looking at dates, and, and DBA submittals are due on the 20th of each month. And, of course, today is 21st. So the next available one would be May 20th to put us in front of the ZBA on June 10th. And if that all works, there's a planning board meeting on the 22nd of June. So if, if that could work, we would have zoning board, hopefully that we're in the home stretch uh, of site plan review on the 22nd. Just throwing it out there, but it seems like that, that could work. Okay, now to my general comments. And I appreciate my fellow board members' comments. I, I mean, I, I understand, and based on what Jay just said, the purpose of this particular presentation, but uh, without having more specifics, I, you know, I can't get my arm around. There's some retail, not much retail. Uh, they may use the the buildings, they may not use the buildings. Um, so I guess I can't put my arms around that, and I'm not supposed to at, at this stage. But I will ask a question: wetland. Mm -hmm. I'm still, and you talked about the retention pond and whose responsibility that involves. Um, how does that play into the big picture? The, as far as who's responsible for the pond, th th yeah. that's, a, that's a great question. And Jay and I had a conversation about it and what it means, and that was this afternoon. We need to do our homework to figure out what, what's going on with that. It, it appears that we may have rights to that pond as well as several of the other members of that subdivision. Mm -hmm. um, we need to look at it from a legal standpoint and find out who actually does have rights. Okay, so that's one question. Uh, and, and the other is that 
from what I'm reading in the preliminaries here, there's not going to be any disruption of wetlands. You're not, are you are you on, not? Or are you going to be involved with DEP? We are. We have some filling of wetlands, but it's under the 4,300 square feet, which makes us an exempt project in, in the DEP's eyes. Um, I don't see us going over what we're already showing, which is roughly about 3,000 square feet. Um, we would have to go to the DEP for a permit by rule for stormwater because we're disturbing more than an acre of land. Okay. Well, that's all I have for the moment. Thanks, Just bring to the table. <coughs> Susan? Um, the land that on this presentation is white. Is this owned by the applicant? I don't oh. quite understand what of this is actually owned as opposed to being developed. So, the land is this shape right here. Okay, so he owns all of that. Alan Hyman owns all of that land. It's under a purchase and sale agreement with Go Green Landscaping. All of it? The whole parcel, not correct. Not just the parcel that we're looking at this evening? That is correct. Okay. So I'm not necessarily concerned, but I think it's important to know that this is the first of a... Because the applicant now owns all of that property, the chances are pretty good that something else can be done in there. Correct, and, and that's why we we're talking about this whole site inventory master plan so we can work through that process and show what could happen on the remainder of the land. I, I think with the research we did with Esther Brooks and looking at what had happened prior, we have a really good idea of what could happen there. Um, and that's going to be... I'm bringing it up here is that I think it's a perfect example of why the ordinance is written the way it is yep. or an example of where it gets applied is that this is a perfect example yep. of why the ordinance was written this way. Completely agree. Yeah, and I think it's going to help everybody, not just us, but I think it's going to help yep. you as well in, in the long run. Um, I don't really have any problems with this. Um, I think that when it comes back from the CBA, which of course it has to do, we will take a look at some of the more refined items, mm -hmm. such as you know, where the storage is going to be. and whether yep. the, I would like to think that maybe by then we'll have a concept as to whether it's going to be used in toto Right. by the applicant or split up in terms of rental because that could make a difference. Exactly. Other yep. than that, I, I, think it's, I think it's nice to see this part of Scarborough getting developed. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Roger? Uh, thank you. Um, I, I was actually curious um, about the parcel also that um, Sue mentioned. And um, so that, that white area on, on your, your design there, that could ultimately be developed. Correct. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's um, it's a mixture of kind of open field pasture with some young growth trees. What about the little parcel that goes out to Route One? It's a f 50 foot strip of land, and I believe the thinking behind it when they originally did it is it would allow any of the businesses in here to have signage on Route One. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I have nothing else. Oh, sorry. <coughs> um. I don't have any major concerns. Uh, one general question I have, and I, obviously it's sketch and, and things aren't fully fleshed out, but <coughs> is there any particular rationale or any particular assumptions behind uh, how the parking is shown? And is that sort of just sort of kind of a placeholder at this point? Or yeah, I, we've been kind of fooling around with it in the office and, and moving stuff here and there. Um, could it be flipped over where the parking is behind and the buildings are flipped down? Yes, it could, but it's, I think we've also been looking at the bigger picture of what else could happen here and mm -hmm. looking at it. I think there's a driveway here, it makes sense to bring in a road here, and then looking at the back of the building. I mean, those are all kind of things that we need to flesh out through the, the master plan process, but um, we've, we've looked at it with eyes towards what else could go in here. So presumably, and again, as you said, sort of working through that inventory and the master plan, uh, presumably you might not build out all the parking that could potentially be needed right. so on future development. The, the parking we're showing is what is, would be required for 10,000 square feet of office space. Um, we were conservative, calling it all office space, knowing that there is a mixture of some garage space in here. That was going to be my next question, is whether there was any particular assumption associated with the number of spaces. So that's good to have that clarification. Okay. Um, as discussed, you've got some some more wetlands due diligence to do. Um, outdoor storage will obviously be a, a discussion point. Uh, possible 
concerns about noise pollution or yeah. light. The lighting might fall into that as well. So again, we don't have anyone super close. Just something to have on our radar. Uh, you mentioned uh, doing the traffic count, and um, obviously we'll be getting into internal circulation as well. Um, in terms of process, uh, to the extent that staff can accommodate it, and I think I'm hearing from Jay that he thinks it could be feasible, I'm certainly fine with the notion of combining the site inventory and the master plan uh, stages of the plan development review process. It's, I think it's something we've done in the past on occasion. I think given, given the scale of what we're looking at here, I think it seems reasonable, again, to the extent that staff can accommodate it and within the context of the ZBA process as well. So yep. um, beyond that, I don't think um, anything else. Is there, are there, is there any uh, feedback that you're looking for from us? That no, you I, I think you just gave me the answer I was looking for is the combining the uh, site inventory and master plan process, which is I mean, they're anxious to get moving, and there's some deadlines in the purchase and sale that we, we're trying to hit. So, I don't, I don't think I'm sensing any opposition to that. Okay. Very good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Item number six, Valentine Development LLC requests review of the Seventh Amendment to the Eastern Village Subdivision Plan for a lot line adjustment between previously approved lots. One, yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, essentially, the, the uh, title of this one stipulates exactly what it is. There's, uh, this is a Eastern Village is an approved subdivision, and the applicant is seeking to amend the lot line between lots 136 and 137, 10 feet northwesterly. Um, th these are actually lots where there's going to be a duplex that straddles the property line. And so he wants to shift the property line over so the duplex, basically so the building uh, sits better on the property. Um, outside of that, staff has no real comments. They're not adding any parcels, uh, not changing really any of the provisions other than what ostensibly will amount to an orientation of the building. Um, so I have no further comments. Thanks, You're okay Dave. with it? Is the applicant here? I'm not no, seeing the applicant. Well, I thought he I would be him, here. But, but. Okay. So. I did have a discussion today, mentioned that it would be good to have someone here. Um, if there were any questions by the board, it's not a requirement that they be here, but certainly if the board has questions, so be it. But other than that, staff's... How about comments? Yep. Yeah. <coughs> I'm trying to pull up the plan here so you can see what's going on, but not quite well. Personally, I don't have any particular concerns with this. It seems fairly straightforward. Um, if anyone has... Anything? Are these two lots, as you're coming off of Commerce Drive, they're right there on, is that where they are located? They are down, so you come off Commerce Drive, and if this map would come up, it would be a lot easier to show you, but you come off Commerce Drive into Ballantyne Drive, yeah. you pass the, the condos that have been there for a while on yeah. the right, there's a couple single family homes, the road comes down and uh, comes to a T intersection with yeah. Inspiration Drive. These two lots are right off to the left, okay. just before you get okay. to Inspiration okay. Drive. And I apologize that this won't come up, but <coughs> there you have it. I will add, we, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this item. It's not a formal public hearing, but if there is anyone in the audience who'd like to <coughs> speak, feel free. All right. Any other comments? Does anyone have any concerns about this one? If, I, if staff is happy, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. <coughs> Mike? Yeah, just a just a quick question. I'm I have no issues with it. So this plan that we see, um, this is showing the effect of the change, or it's just showing the two lots. Those are the two they, lots. I don't know if you're looking at the existing. What's that little red red writing say there? It says current amendment change. Okay, that must be what they're proposing. Yes. Okay. Yep, that is the effect of the amendment. Okay. No objection. I just have a question. I just uh, out of curiosity, is, has this development is this all approved? Yes. So yes. This isn't going to be done in any kind of phases, approved phases or anything. It this is all approved. It has been approved okay. in phases. Okay. But yes, the, the 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 entirety of the 
of the subdivision has been approved. It is being built out in phases. Okay. So what, you're, what you've seen so far, <coughs> are the, the development began off Commerce Drive, yeah. off Ballantyne. That was essentially as far as they could get in terms of a dead end road. And that's why you're now seeing them start what is being referred to as phase three or maybe even 3A at this point, who knows, <laughs> off, Eastern, off Eastern Road, which will connect through um, and then sort of the middle of the development yeah. will begin to... And, <coughs> and there'll be no connections off of Route 1 at this point? No direct connection off Route 2 on this point. Okay. <coughs> Pretty impressive. <laughs> and my sense, and I, obviously I can't speak to the applicant, but my, my sense is that, you know, this was approved a number of years ago, a certain amount was done, things happened with the economy and there were other factors, and now things seem to really be ramping up again. So. Roger, just for your information, on the Transportation Committee, we are aware of how all this may flow uh, from the standpoint of Black Point Road and Route 1, so we're, we're, we are aware of it, mm -hmm. and at least sensitive to it. Sure. If there aren't any other comments or questions, I'll move that we approve a lot line adjustment for Ballantyne Development, LLC, Eastern Village. Second. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Again, item number seven was tabled. Item number eight. Frank Marston requests a site plan amendment review for 55 Spring Street. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see, so 55 Spring Street is in the B2 zone. Uh, this is an existing site. Uh, currently, there's an office building, um, and the applicant has re is requesting to modify not the actual existing building, but the parking lot configuration in front of the building as I'm sure the applicant will, uh, will highlight a bit further, but when it was originally, when the building was originally built, it was built um, as a, what would be considered a uh, personal service in town or gymnasium, um, and so it was, the parking lot was really designed with that type of use in mind. Um, now it's an office building, so they're looking to redo the work uh, in, in turn. I will mention that the applicant did submit through the board's pre-application review process, received comments from planning staff and our civil engineer, peer reviewer, Woodard and Curran. Um, they've made a host of changes that we had requested, and at this point, staff really has no further comment or concerns. The only issue outstanding, um, we believe is still outstanding, is that part of the proposal is on leased DOT land, and we have yet to see a revised DOT lease that would allow this type of work. So. Barring that, I believe the applicant is really here to present their proposal before the board ostensibly as a sketch plan with maybe, if the board's comfortable, something we could consider as a, a consent item at the next item, uh, at the next agenda if the board doesn't have any further concerns that they want to address. So with that, I would turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Mr. I'll turn over the applicant. Well, thank you. Um, I'm Steve Blaze with the <laughs> – lost my pen there. Uh, Steve Blaze with Blaze Civil Engineers. I'm here tonight with Frank Marston, the owner of the property, and uh, Jennifer Ladd from our office. Um, so as Jay mentioned, um, this is an office building. 10,300 square feet is the orange here. Um, it currently hosts uh, about 40% of the building is a uh, Saco Bay physical therapy, and the other 60% to the right is, um, is U.S. Health Works. Um, we currently have a new tenant that is interested in the space. We have a letter of intent from them. Uh, main medical center, about as good as it gets for a landlord. Um, hmm. Part of the deal is they need more parking, um, so that's why we're here tonight. Um, what what we took a look at was the front of the building, um, the parking lot here. As Jay mentioned, originally the building uh, was constructed in 1988 um, as a gymnasium center. So at the time that uh, Frank sold um, the business, the gymnastic center, he had uh, 730 students all being dropped off. So it, it served a really good purpose. It was a good design for that use. Um, and it, it worked as a drop off, more of a, the lighter gray area here shows what's currently there. Um, the darker gray is what we're adding. So what we did is we looked at a design that maximized parking. Um, fairly simple concept. Um, we squared off the ends here 
um, reconfigured the island. And what we did is double loaded parking going down on each way. It is a two way. Um, the aisle is, we, we reduced the, the aisle to 24 feet from 25. I know the town standard is 25, but um, we did run the fire truck templates through there and it, it, it works well. We thought trying to reduce the impervious areas that we're creating. We're adding a little under 4,000 square feet of impervious services, uh, but the good news is we're able to add 22 spaces with that. That's about an average, um, it's an average of 176 square feet per space, which is very efficient. We're adding spaces here by making this a lot more efficient. Uh, a standard parking lot, if you have an 18 foot space and you go halfway down the aisle, it'd be about 276 square feet. So we're able to add a parking space for 100 square feet less per parking space, which is kind of um, good news. Um, we're maintaining grades here. We're maintaining the, the parking surface um, and adding some here. So what that means is the, the current grading uh, drainage sheets across the parking area. So um, you'll notice there's a small block retaining wall on the edge here. The reason that's there is um, so we don't have to regrade the whole parking lot to make it work great drainage wise. Um, and still have room to fit a pond in this corner here. Um, there's a pond out there today. It was designed, uh, redesigned in 1998, um, and we redesigned it again. Actually, Sean Frank over there designed it um, a while back. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and we're redesigning it um, to accom accommodate these ex additional parking spaces. We are maintaining the peak flows, the, the rate of flow, um, and decreasing it for the, for the higher storms. Um, I'm not... I might just touch on the comments that we worked through with staff. Um, uh, when, when we look at a site plan here, we want to look at the standards to make sure everything's working to current standards. So one comment um, that the staff had was lighting. Um, tell us about what you have out there for lighting. And it turns out Frank replaced all the lighting one year ago with uh, LED full cutoff fixtures. 78-watt um, pole mounted lights in the parking area. and. Um, I believe 50, 52 watt wall packs on the building front and back. Um, also, um, there's a couple dumpsters back here, a dumpster. Um, that didn't have any kind of screening, so we're um, proposing to add a cedar fence around that. Um, and um, Woodard and Curran uh, peer reviewed the application. Um, they had a concern with, we originally had drainage going over this uh, small block retaining wall. Um, they had a concern with that to make sure it would uh, kind of hold up to the salt. Uh, and also, because there's a, a small pond here, it's nothing life-threatening, but there was a concern about cars rolling into the pond. <laughs> <laughs> so um, g great comments. Um, so what we ended up doing is uh, relocating a catch basin that was about here to the corner and adding Cape Cod berm, uh, like a four inch curve, nothing real real big along this edge and this edge. So the water gets directed into the catch basin, into the pond, and back to where it was all going to begin with. Um, and um, lastly, um, landscaping within the parking area. I think that's uh, something that the, the, the town um, takes pretty seriously. Um, we do have, we've added, um, since the first submission, we've added one or two of these. I forget how many were in there originally. Um, and there's some green space along the building. Um, we're a little bit over 10% open space in the front parking lot as a result of that. Um, so we, we, we feel that addresses the standard pretty well. We've also added um, some screening planting along Spring Street. Um, you know, all the lower, the, the plantings that are suggested on the town standards um, that block the cars but not the building from the view of uh, Route 1. That's pretty much sums up what we're doing. Um, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Before we go to board discussion, this is another item that's open for public comment. So if anyone's interested, come on up. All right. Thank you. Seems fairly straightforward. Um, Roger, do you have anything? Um, not really, other than uh, May Medical is going to take over the whole building. That's the plan right now. 60% um, of it. 60%, okay. Um, I, I don't really have anything else. Thanks, Susan. 
because the presentation didn't mention any of the parking in the rear, I'm assuming that's going to be taken care of by Maine Medical. It's not going to be, I mean, it, nothing is going to impact this. It's going to remain exactly the same. Correct. Other than adding a cedar fence um, around the right. dumpster. Right. Okay. Um, I don't have any problems with this either. However, I have to be true to form. I am the landscape lady. And in terms of not high enough to hide the building, but high enough to provide some value, we don't think so. This, um, it's hard because it's so tiny, you know, and it's, it's almost impossible to read. But um, daylilies. Daylilies are lovely. I'm a fan of daylilies, but they don't really provide much in the way of a buffer. Uh, you've got, thank you very much, you have some crab apples. Two. I really don't think two crab apples on the way to the main turnpike is excessive. Sure. I think that you need to look at this again and do a little more in the way of some substantial landscaping. And because I'm mostly blind, um, bring me something that I can actually see when okay. you come back next time as opposed to me bringing my little magnifying glass. And I'm only sure. complaining because I'm old. Um, basically, we used to have these big, huge plans, and everybody was all over everybody else with their plans, and so we asked for smaller plans, and we got them, and it's great. But when it comes to landscaping, it's almost impossible to read. So if that's my only complaint other than that, I think this is wonderful. Thank you. Ron? Yeah, what's Maine Medical going to do with it? I mean, what, what, it, what kind of facility are they using it for? Um, we're not 100% sure, but we're pretty sure it's neurology-based. Okay. And the other thing, just to follow up on Jay, the part of it's owned by DOT and how that lease, where does that stand? They're working on it. Um, they, they keep going on vacation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, we're all entitled to vacation. I just came back, flew in to Logan at noon today. Um, that's ongoing. Um, their attorney was on vacation one week, and the manager was on vacation another. Um, but we're working through it. Our attorney's ready to, to, to review it when it comes in. We already have a draft, um, but we're working working through it. We fully expect to be ready by the next planning board meeting. That, with, uh, that's where I'm going with that. That will be resolved hopefully by the time you come back to it. Yeah, I don't see us. Uh, if it isn't, we'd have to wait another meeting. That is the way I see it, but we fully expect to, to have that. Okay. I'm done. Thanks, Ron. Mike? Thank you. I was one of those uh, folks that <clears throat> drove in that parking lot dropping off kids at the Cumberland County Gymnastics. So familiar with the site. I think you've thought it out very, very well. Uh, put a lot of uh, detail uh, into it. I think it's uh, going to be an improvement over what the, is there now. Um, on, regarding the D with the uh, DOT, what does it say now? I mean, what do you what do you uh, use that is theirs, if you will, now? Um, so it's this area here. Uh, you'll see there's there's the property line is a thick black line, and you'll see there's it you know kind of shows up as two parcels. Okay. This is the leased area here. So the leased area is to the left of that. Yeah. Okay. It's so like it, the dividing lines right here. So the change the change, even though uh, I, I'm not a lawyer in such things or really um, schooled in such things, I can see that it, it would be hard to imagine there'd be any any um, rebuttal to. <clears throat> what is going on now and has been going on for years and what you're proposing. I need to give you DOT's number. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's just additional payment. I'm just just some additional payment. It is. It is. It's more use of their land, which um, it's, it's actually being appraised um, as it is, our, our plan is being appraised for the value of parking spaces within the right-of-way. I see. Okay. Yeah. So in that, no, it takes time. All right. Obviously. Um, when do you hope for uh, to see us again? Uh, we're hoping the next meeting. Next I know we have a week um, till the next submittal. Um, and, and the current 60% that Maine Med has, uh, has uh, um, expressed interest in, is that empty now? No, it's actually uh, currently occupied by U.S. Health Works. U.S. Health, okay. Right. So similarly, it's just a different, different tenant in some ways. Yes. Yeah, to the yeah. casual um, passerby. Okay. 
Very yep. good. Thank you for your work on it. Welcome. Corey, could I just sure. chime in real quick? Just to, to your uh, point about how our next agenda is due next Monday, certainly um, doesn't sound like, you know, and we'll wait to sort of end this conversation with the board, but if there aren't major concerns by the board and we're really just waiting for this DOT lease, staff wouldn't have any problem putting this on the agenda and hoping that the DOT lease comes in. I mean, we just need to see it an hour or two before so we can just read it, be sure they have the right title interest to do what they're looking to do. Um, I'm not hearing anything yet. Again, I know we're not done with the discussion that would change the design in any ostensible way, you know, maybe a little bit of landscaping. But um, So if the board's comfortable with that approach, staff would certainly be amenable yeah, to that. Yeah, of course, that would be up to you and the chairman, but I would uh, certainly be in favor of that. We could always table it. Or mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, just uh, jumping on what, what Jay said, I'd certainly be open to that, that type of approach. Um, really not a whole lot of like work involved with that and have it kind of teed up and hopefully you'll have what you need by then. Um, I really don't have anything to add. I, I appreciate the, the thought you put into the, the parking and, and uh, the, the overall design. Uh, everything seems to work and I um, appreciate Susan's comments on landscaping and we'll take another sure. look at that. Um, but beyond that, we'll uh, wish you luck and hope to see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Just, just one last question. I'm kind of curious. Have you um, approached DOT about buying that? Because a few years ago they they were willing to sell some land, you know. <laughs> oh, they might be now though. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Item number nine is tabled. Item number 10, Layton Farm LLC requests subdivision review for expansion of previously approved Layton Farm subdivision. Jay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chair. As some board members may recall, this item was before you about a year ago uh, for approval of a 99 lot residential subdivision. I believe we have at least two board members who I don't believe were on the board at that time, so um, you know, certainly I think a bit of history is, is warranted. Um, during that initial review, uh, the, the design was ostensibly what the board is seeing here today. Um, but during the review, there was an issue that arose with regards to setback requirements to transmission towers. There's an existing tower on site, um, which precluded at that time the addition of the second entranceway off Elmwood Avenue, um, which then changed the whole subdivision layout due to uh, the town's debt length of dead end road, number of houses along a dead end road that are allowed. Um, so when that issue came up, the applicant sort of took a step back and came forward with the board with uh, approval of a 23 lot subdivision, which is actually outlined in red, it looks like, up on what we're looking at. Um, with the recognition through the board discussion that um, you know that was really identified as being phase one of the developers hope to eventually fully build out the property. As luck would have it I suppose uh, would be the way to frame it. Uh, our ordinance committee had been working through uh, transmission tower, tele telecommunication tower ordinance changes um, for a variety of other reasons, mostly communication <laughs> reasons. But um, one of the issues that came out of that uh, zoning change, or yeah, of that zoning change, was a provision that allowed the Board of Appeals to reduce the setback to transmission towers if a certain set of criteria are met. Um, so the applicant, taking advantage of the uh, recent changes, went before the Board of Appeals in March and received approval to reduce the setback to the tower for the road for the road right away uh, to I think it's 45 feet from the base of the tower I believe it is um, but certainly we'll work through those towers uh, <laughs> those uh, details um, so that's just a bit of background in terms of process this property is uh, in the R2 and also in the RP districts um, resource protection being the RP uh, given the characteristics of the site, it triggers the conservation subdivision design requirements, which uh, requires at least 50% of the 
parcel to be maintained as open space, uh, but in kind, lots are allowed to be smaller um, than they might otherwise be allowed in the R2 district uh, to accommodate basically a density neutral approach. Um, so again, as we review this, we'll be going through sort of the conservation subdivision design requirements, the subdivision ordinance, street acceptance ordinance, and those type of items. Um, before I sort of highlight some staff comments in terms of details, one of the things we noticed in the applicant's submission was, again, uh, it looks like you know, a lot of the materials were resubmitted from when this was a 99-lot subdivision. Really what the board is looking at now is a 76-lot subdivision, um, and there were some inconsistencies between plan notes and what was in the documentation. So, you know, we think for clarity of record, for the board to do its due diligence that the applicant needs to sort of repackage some of those materials. It's, it's all in there, but it's really a matter of the applicant pulling those out and, and uh, codifying what's being requested at this time. Um, so uh, just, just a bit of housekeeping on that. Um, in terms of planner's comments, a um, couple of items I want to flag. Uh, so board members may recall that as part of the uh, density calculation for a conservation subdivision design, there's really two aspects to this. There's the net residential area calculation, which the applicant's done and was pretty well vetted at the last, during the last submission, which identified 112 lots, I believe, could possibly be built. But then the other uh, bit to it is what's uh, called the um, uh, con uh, conventional layout a conceptual conventional layout showing that, you know, can 112 conventional R2 lots be sited here? That's 20,000 square foot lots with 100 foot of frontage. Um, during the original approval or review about a year ago, the board found that only 99 lots could be sited. Um, and so that's how the applicant has come to their 99 number. Uh, however, I think there's a, still a question ar around how that conventional that previous conventional layout treated the tower site. I think there were some lots that were within that tower area. So um, that's an item that will need to be readdressed as we move forward. Um, Question, Jay. Sure. Just to get my numbers. So the 76 we're talking about today is over and above the 23 we've already approved. Correct. Okay, thank so you. essentially they are looking for a 99 lot <laughs> subdivision. It's just in the matter of we've already approved 23 of those lots. So, right. okay. um, so that's really the, the issue at hand. Um, within the conservation subdivision design, uh, this was an issue the board had talked about a little bit during the last review, um, but never got to the final because the full build out was withdrawn. One of the provisions of the conservation subdivision design is wetlands avoidance, um, mitigating any impacts to wetlands. Um, really the only way an applicant can impact a wetland is if the board finds there's no practical alternative uh, other, th other than what's proposed. So there are a few areas that are, you know, the, the edges of the wetlands are, are, are clipped, so to speak, by roadways. Um, and so we, again, bring that to the board's attention for your uh, due consideration as you go through the review process. Um, I think another item uh, to talk about in terms of uh, pedestrian co connectivity, uh, echoing really what was in Bill Bray's memos um, and staff's prior memos in terms of some off-site impacts in terms of sidewalks along Elmwood Avenue, also along uh, uh, Green Acres between uh, Route 1 and 1st Avenue, um, the potential for uh, solidifying some of the pedestrian connections that have been in the town's transportation planning, the Oak Hill pedestrian plan and such. Um, this item back again, going back to the original review, the board did send this to the Conservation Commission for them to weigh in. Um, I think you know a lot of those elements have been addressed, but one of the uh, outstanding questions or things that have changed since then is the location of um, the public parking spaces. As board members, um, and I'm sure the applicant will give us a better overview of this, there's a whole lot of land that's proposed to be uh, 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 conveyed to the town as required, or it's one of the allowances in the conservation subdivision that abuts a, an existing town-owned parcel. And uh, 
the board and conservation commission have been very interested in, in seeing a connectivity trail connection between this parcel and that parcel and and so um, the the present location uh, of the proposed parking area is questioned um, previously it was brought further towards the end of phase one um, to tie which may which the board may uh, like to reconsider or at least talk about. Um, I guess those are sort of the highlights of staff comments. You will have also received comments from Woodard and Curran and from Bill Bray um, on this item in advance of this meeting. So with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. Sean? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Sean Frank. I'm a civil engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, the applicant, uh, Leighton Farm LLC, which is uh, uh, Vincent Mayetta, uh, apologizes. Uh, we thought the meeting was last night. We didn't realize again it was the uh, the holiday. It wasn't a holiday to us, unfortunately. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, he left for out of town today. So uh, he certainly will be here for the next meeting. Uh, appreciate Jay's comments. Um, uh, number one, I certainly will repackage the information. Jay's right, I always try to look to save a buck I can when I'm looking at submissions. So we did a cover letter, if you will, and then kind of regurgitated everything we had from before. I, I don't have my handy microphone here, and I didn't bring a, 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 my little uh, laser, so I'm just going to uh, try to do both here if I can. Uh, this is a, a plan I know the board is very familiar with. Uh, it was a conservation subdivision design. It is a little bit over 80 acres. Uh, the big issue from the board's perspective, obviously, was the Nonsuch River, the resource protection that's associated with it. Uh, so as you may recall, uh, here is the RP zone, um, and there is a long, large portion of property both on this side and on the other side of the Nonsuch River that are going to be conveyed to the town of Scarborough in association as a, a permanent open space uh, that will be... Uh, turn over to the town and obviously abut some existing town land that's there. Uh, as we had discussed in the past, there's a lot of trails that are down within this uh, particular area. Uh, the majority of those trails, in fact, will be retained, um, but what we are proposing is to make a connection uh, to the sidewalk, which will be throughout the whole project uh, in this area right through here and as well down and through here. Uh, we had specifically proposed parking area down through here. I think as part of the preliminary review that we had for the overall subdivision uh, prior to the tower issue, if you will, coming up, uh, that we had discussed that this hammerhead that was going to be uh, at the end of phase one uh, could provide some additional parking uh, uh, for the trail. So uh, uh, we will incorporate that into the design so that we will have this will be, you know, obviously limited parking area, but two parking areas, if you will, to allow uh, uh, people to come and park their vehicles and then access the trail system. One at the existing hammerhead and the other down here is shown. Um, Jay has a perfect point in terms of we went to the Board of Appeals. The tower is right in this location here uh, to allow the, the latent farm right-of-way. Uh, that does impact uh, this one lot. Uh, what I had discussed with the, uh, with the applicant was actually having no lots, if you will, to actually get after, uh, get beyond uh, the proposed tower. Uh, so, Jay, so what I'm probably going to show is that, uh, again, we'll obviously want to come back at some point in the future. Uh, as you may recall, the lease for this tower is up in 2017, I believe, off from memory, um, is to be able to allow us to come back and obviously to, to revisit uh, the entrance, if you will, in these three towers and through here. Uh, we had also worked with the uh, town engineer at the time and the uh, traffic engineer in terms of offsetting, if you will, the center line of Leighton Farm Road uh, as we came in, as you may recall, uh, Green Acres Avenue and our roadway access are just slightly offset. We shifted the center line within the right of way, if you, little, uh, if you may, to, to bring that pavement over a little bit. So the actual offset, if you will, from center line to center line is about five feet, five or six feet, as I recall. Uh, and again, I believe the traffic, uh, the sit downs traffic engineer was comfortable that that would have no uh, impact in terms of uh, uh, access coming in and out. Uh, I think we had discussed the sidewalk. I know I think a lot of the folks on the board were uh, very interested in the sidewalk going from First Avenue up to Route 1. Uh, I think I'll, uh, I, I think I pass it on to the applicant. I know he'll be here for the next uh, meeting. Uh, I think we also discussed uh, Elmwood Avenue. Again, we all have sidewalks on one side of the streets here. There, are, there is a sidewalk on the other side of Elmwood that currently exists. 
Uh, I don't think we ever saw any need to put a sidewalk on this side of the roadway. And again, I thought at that point in time that the board was comfortable with that assertion as well. Um, the other discussion we had had was in terms of stormwater management and the fact that now uh, we are proposing, and I think you see that on most subdivisions that are coming through now, uh, we do wind up with conveyance structures, uh, whether they be swales, whether they be uh, uh, collection systems, whether they be treatment options, due to the fact that under today's guidelines, Chapter 500 guidelines for both the state and for the town of Scarborough, you need to treat 95% of the developed area, excuse me, 95% of the impervious area. That 95% includes the backs of the homes. So if you have a house with a peaked roof and the front half of the yard is coming towards the roadway and the back half is falling off from the roadway, we still have to take care of that runoff. We have to treat 95%. So uh, there really is no option. I know before we always had, and I, again, I know I've just seen here from the planning boards a number of these things coming through where, you know, again, where we have common lot lines, where you have back line lines, we have to actually pick that runoff up and direct that down to whether it's a buffer, which we try to use as much as we can to direct that runoff, because again, it's not a lot of area, but it's a certain amount of area uh, to undisturb buffers and those types of things, uh, but we do have to treat that runoff. Uh, we really uh, are, in just again, just to meet current standards in terms of the treatment associated with that. Um, not residential, again, the number does come out to 112. I'll just add another note to that, if that's, a, you know, that based upon conventional review with the board, is, I just don't want someone to do the math and say, geez, you know, this Sean Frank from Savannah, he can't even do mathematics correctly. So, I mean, I think I need to leave that 112 and just add another note there to that effect in terms of how we came up with the actual 99 that's allowed. Um, and I have done a sheet with the 50%, so I'll certainly make that part of my, uh, my, my other submission. Again, I thought we had some discussions last time, and again, it's just in terms of where the roadways were. Obviously, the whole intent was to maintain uh, the resource protection is undisturbed. Mm. Uh, the, the big, bigger wetlands, if you will, as, as, as largely intact as we could with the, uh, the associated setbacks associated with that, um, that we, in fact, do have some impacts, but it's the impacts are associated with the roadway construction um, that we have gone through. And again, that uh, Jay did mention that this was the first one that had gone through the local review authority that the, the town now has for these size projects. Uh, but the DEP still retains control for stormwater management. Uh, we do have the permit for the whole 99 lot subdivision. Uh, they've maintained control of uh, wetland impacts, um, at least in terms of, of their review, as, long as, the, as well as the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, that is a permit we have from the DEP as well, um, and the Army Corps of Engineers in terms of associated with the overall wetland impacts here, which roughly was about 30,000 square feet, so roughly three quarters of an acre uh, for the total road network. Again, all associated with the road. Um, and the other part was the traffic movement permit through the state. Again, we didn't go through the final review through the town, because obviously that has a lot to do with traffic impact fees as well as uh, the off-site things, but we do have the traffic movement permit from the state. Uh, we we have the wetland alteration permit through the uh, DEP and the Army Corps, and we have the stormwater management permit through the, for the, through the DEP. So we really are looking at uh, approval uh, through the town for the final. Um, we are looking at additional four phases of development. As Jay said, here's the first phase, which is currently under construction. The second phase basically proposed uh, looping back out. Uh, uh, to Elmwood Avenue, uh, the third phase basically down in this general location, the fourth phase uh, back up again so we complete that loop, and then the fifth phase, if you will, be uh, uh, the interior road network associated with that. Um, all the infrastructure was obviously proposed and, and, and coordinated in association with that. You may recall we actually designed these roads a little bit differently in terms of uh, a little bit wider travel surface, a little less uh, cur uh, curvature within the center line, and then tightened it up just a little bit within these because we saw those more as the local access roads, if you will. Um, I believe... I believe I've hit uh, uh, the majority of these things. Uh, as I said, what we would do is bring in a plan uh, that, again, would basically uh, 
just combine this area and show this as, as land to be retained by the, by the applicant, which uh, these two lots in through here. The tower lot, again, I'll show that as the tower lot. We'll show the setback associated with it. Uh, we still define that as the tower lot, if you will, to be, def to be retained by the applicant, uh, just for the understanding that obviously once that lease gets worked out and we finalize everything through the FAA that, you know, uh, we'll come back in hopefully for uh, one more amendment, uh, probably between now and then additional amendments. Um, but again, I think the main point with this is this, I think, is, you know, uh, one are, uh, from my applicant standpoint, I think he loves half-acre lots. I think from a marketing standpoint, he thinks half-acre lots sell better than 10,000 square foot lots. But I think from the town's perspective, this is one, you know, I think this is where your conservation subdivision design certainly works out beautifully in terms of maintaining as much of uh, the wetlands in their current configuration, maintaining all of the resource protection, uh, uh, obtaining land through the town that abuts existing uh, uh, undisturbed land or, or a, a nature trail area down along the river, um, and you know developing the property uh, within the areas that should be developed, if you will. So, uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I conclude my presentation and, and certainly be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Uh, this is yet another item where we have the opportunity for public comment. If anyone would like to get up and speak. <coughs> Just uh, provide your name and address, and again, address any questions or comments to the board. George and Shirley Gruber, we reside at 23 Elmwood Avenue, the abutting property to this property we're proposing this program. Uh, the entry road. Uh, is a continuation of Green Acres Lane, and it uh, actually uh, jogs around my property, which I have a tree line right down the edge of my property, which seems to be in challenged uh, with this road coming through there. Uh, they cut down all the trees along it. It's also used to be vernal pool areas, which seem to disappear in the past decade or two. But uh, I noticed when they were grading that particular area, they made it convenient for their water to continue over my tree line, which I didn't particularly appreciate. Uh, during this storm last night, I got rather inundated with more water than I was accustomed to, especially with all the foliage being removed. And the incline of the property sort of drains into my area. I was wondering, back along you did the Green Acres water program where you accommodated and put in a lot of drainage pipes to drain it off down Elmwood Avenue. I wondered if they had considered the same type of program for this development and put it underground piping to dispose of the drainage water or whether they're going to have basins in the roadway or how high a curbs they're going to accommodate with. If you would be considerate of that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Susan, would you like to start us off for discussion? I'm very confused. It looks like we're back where we started from. We're going to go back to the beginning, even though we've taken a piece of this out and created a whole development out of it. Well, I think that was part of staff's comment that really what we're looking at is a 76 lot subdivision mm -hmm. and all the right. paperwork referred to 99 lots. So right. Yes, we are back to where we started, but we've taken one, <laughs> okay. we've taken a step. But I think it's important to understand that we were all on the same page when we took that step in terms of where we were going at that time. Well, I, I agree with you. But what you're coming... Okay. This is really hard because I don't want us to appear as if we are, you know, um, rigid about applying things that have a little wiggle room. And I suppose this has a little wiggle room. But it took me two conversations with staff before I began to understand what we were doing here. 
because we were using what was left over, essentially. From the, nothing really fit. Nothing really made sense to me. So I'm, I'm looking forward to somehow. I don't know how this is going to happen. Um, Jay, how is how are we? I mean, he's going to change the 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 applicant is going to change the application to go back to. What are we, how is this going to work? We've already got a subdivision of X number of lots. So what are we going to do at this point? At this point, the applicant is proposing a 76-lot subdivision. In addition to the one he already has. But the one you already have is different. If you recall, they, the land that's being proposed to be subdivided now was retained land of the developer. Right. So was it part of the original subdivision? The original subdivision stood on its own with its 50% of open space and, and stood on its own. So really we are, <coughs> so yes, the, as I said sort of in my staff comments, all the information we need <laughs> is embedded in what was submitted. Okay. But it needs to be parsed out and, and further refined I think for clarity of record. I think that I mean, we have two, two of the five members here tonight were not, have no history. No. And, so, and again, I don't so want to make a big deal out of this, right. but I think that I am an example of somebody who doesn't get it. So, well, I just want to be very clear too, okay? I, cause, and again, this was always shown as phase one of the latent right. five subdivision, okay? So again, we were at the 90th percentile, if you will, with the full build-out design. We had made a complete preliminary subdivision application for 99 lots of that we had gone through I know we multiple through. meetings associated with how to get to that 99 lots. Right. Okay, so something came up in terms of the tower, so that meant we couldn't get the whole thing. Susan, you've always told me for years and years, don't come in piecemeal, come in with the overall yes, project. So we do. came in with the overall project. Something came up that kept us from getting the overall project approved all at once, so I had to piecemeal one piece off at that particular point Look, in time. Before we go any further on this, all I want to do is make sure that when we end up with it, you and staff, applicant and staff, are going to come up with a way that this is going to be totally legal. Susan, can I jump in? I think yeah, it's important in, in regard to your defense. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is true, Sean, but in reading through this material, there are discrepancies to the original plan. I appreciate that. Okay, and I think that's what one of the things that Susan's trying to get across and get our arms around. Yes, we approved 99 lots, but now there are discrepancies within that original, and that's what we have to deal with. Right. Thank you, Susan. And I don't begin to understand, and I don't even want to have you explain it to me because that's not what I get paid the big bucks to do. But I, I'm assuming that you and staff are going to get together and figure out how to make this. Yes, ma'am. One piece, because as far as my looking at it's concerned, it's not, and it's um, it's very confusing. And I do want to make sure that you take into account the request that was made by. A and I'd be happy to just address that if I could, just a moment, because uh, absolutely, yeah. in terms of, and obviously, I apologize. I had no idea, obviously, when they they cut. I mean, I didn't realize they were cutting out there until it well, actually I happened. Well, I think that this is just an example of why we have public hearing, so that this kind of stuff can be taken to the applicant, and the applicant will do what it can <coughs> do to take care of your needs. Other than that, I guess I'm all set. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. I would just say that when we build that road, obviously the road itself will be constructed with the curbs, the catch basins, the under drains, the subsurface storm drain lines, <coughs> and into, into something right. that offset runoff. So it does get picked up and taken down to the proposed ponds. So that actually in terms of water that would be coming off from this property onto the abutting property would actually be less at the end of the day, uh, just because all of these areas, any areas that are contributing to that will actually be picked up within those roadways now okay. and, and taken down. Thank you. Site. Thank you. Roger? Uh, thank you. Um, okay. <coughs> actually, it seems pretty clear to me. So, um, from what I can gather, um, what you're proposing to do is hold off these lots right along Layton Road where it comes in off of Elmwood until you get a um, clarification on the tower leasing. That's correct. And again, I will, I will revise the plan set, obviously, and certainly revise the submission materials to the town as well. Now, is there, any, is there going to be any change in Layton Ro Road, Layton, Layton Farm Road? No, not at all. That location will stay as, it, as is the design. Building. Correct. Now, has there been any consideration as to these, these uh, people, their, their concerns? 
Uh, as I said, I, again, I think the issue right now is the fact that the cutting has occurred out through there, and probably when they did that, they probably tracked up some of the area, and, and unfortunately it's led to some uh, increased runoff onto these folks, which I, I'm certainly sorry to hear of. I will say, obviously, once the road is done, again, uh, that will be a curved road. It will have catch basins within it. Those catch basins are connected by subsurface storm drains, and there's actually an under drain within there as well. All of the foundations for the proposed lots have foundation drains that are connected to that same system. So again, I think, you know, as the project progresses, it will actually lead to less runoff onto these folks rather than more. Okay. Um, earlier on, earlier you mentioned, is, is Mayetta going to be de developing this whole? Vincent Mayetta is the, the principal member of, of Leighton Farm LLC, yes. Okay. So they'll be doing the building of all this, or? Uh, I, I think really, to be honest with you, I think his, one of his main goals was to provide his, his family work for the next few years. Okay. And, and what's, the, what's the time frame for the total build-out on this? Do you have any idea? Uh, well, it's all market-driven, obviously, but I would, you know, it's, it's 99 lots. So if you could do 20 houses a year, then you're talking a minimum of five years. So, I mean, I'm certainly so, somewhere between five and ten would be my, and I think if we could do it between five and ten, they would be ecstatic. I have no further. Thank you. Mike? Okay. Thank you. Well, I wasn't here, I guess, when... <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike, you weren't. <laughs> so, uh, so you'll have to forgive me a little bit. Not at I, all. Not I at try all. to catch up. Um, it, se it seems to me... Now, Tom, chime in, please, anybody. Uh, but it appears to me that this is either going to be a new subdivision that is being built off an existing subdivision or an amended subdivision? No, we, we approved 99. Oh, so you did approve 99? 99, 99, 99, uh, yes. Uh, okay. There was never any approval. There wasn't? No. We were working through, as you recall, subdivision approval occurs in two stages, preliminary and final. We were working towards preliminary approval. We had probably two or three sketch plans, one or two preliminary meetings, and then staff identified identified the tower issue and that put the brakes on everything the applicant had to step back and then they came forward and only received preliminary approval and ultimately final approval for the 23 lot subdivision Leighton farm so okay so I think so it we didn't approve 99 we never got to any approval All right, so, so isn't it fair to say based on what just Jay said that we have we have already we have a subdivision that has 23 lots Yes. And now we're looking to either amend that to uh, add 76, or this is the new subdivision that's going to be connected to the already. And, and if amendment's approval. the correct word, I'll, I guess I'll, then we, it's an amended subdivision to add 76. Because, I, I mean, certainly we see it as one subdivision at the end of the day. Well, it's the same owner, it's the same we, land, it's the same. We can all see it as an amended subdivision if we, if, uh, as, a, as a subdivision at the end of the day if we call this an amended subdivision. In my view. Because, right, remember how you go through it in this town, that you, Wait, like Jay says, you have to have a, that phase one had to be a standalone, that if, if nothing that, ever, ever that, happened, I we had that, to have Sean, a standalone. That, that's all that's been approved so far. I agree with that. But and you, in terms you, of the 99 lots, the 99 lots was the first step of you from a net residential standpoint, that it wasn't an approved subdivision for 99 lots, but the approval of and the agreed number of lots under the process, if you will, include net residential and the conventional and the conservation subdivision got us all in agreement that we, the net residential for this property was 99 lots. Which that also occurred before the tower discussion, so yes. I think that was one of staff's comments that we yes. need to look at another conventional that, so that, right. but you're, you're already talking about taking out two or three of the existing lots going down to 97 lots. It, so I think, again, that gets back to that we need to go back really right. start at the foundation of a subdivision and build. And again, staff recognizes that a lot of the information is there, but it is. And I can, I can also appreciate what you said, Sean, that you alluded to, that although that 99 lot subdivision was not actually approved by us, there were certain principles of that design that we discussed extensively and that are presumably reflected in this plan that we're now seeing, although there have been some things that have changed and shifted, and because of some of the other um, other factors that we're talking about, I think we do have to sort of look at it as, we're not going back to the drawing board necessarily, but it is sort of, we have to look at it on, on its own terms. And again, I, I, am I probably out here? You're probably right. Am I too far ahead? 
more, obviously based now upon the discussions I'm having here, yes, obviously. So I will get together with Jay and try to come to what the common ground is here in terms of restarting this process, okay? Because again, I was, you're right, I was, I was thinking, all right, you know, we've, 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 we've seen this multiple, multiple times over the years, and, and Jay's absolutely correct. Here it all is again, and uh, uh, I was trying to do it in one fell swoop, and I was probably uh, pushing it too hard again. I, I never do that, as you know. <laughs> I, I've come to recollection now that what's being said, we, we have definitely approved the 23, but not the, the other 76. We said there was a potential, as Sean said, for that, but I'm, I'm with it now. Excuse me, can I just double check on where we are because I'm lost again. Um, okay, so we've got the permitted ones. The question seems to be, and it was brought up earlier, do we just amend it or do we have a separate one? It seems to me as if that's a discussion that doesn't have to be decided by us. Well, right here, uh, right now. You know, with all due respect, I still have the floor, Mr. Chairman, and that's, that's what I want to drive this conversation. I just, want, I just think that at least you know, with all due respect to those who have been on here for a few years, I know that Sue and I, not to speak for Sue, but I'm more familiar and more comfortable proceeding, and I don't want to take away all the hard work that's been done, and I appreciate you take a large piece of land and you and you conceptualize for the board's benefit what this potential build-up can be in the future. But in the meantime, we want to do these 23 lots. It can it stand on its own? We heard that it can. Obviously it can. It's been approved. So I see a subdivision that stands on its own. You call, we're calling it phase one right now. I don't know what it was called when it was approved. Phase one. All right, so let's call it phase one subdivision. It's approved, it stands on its own, and now we want to add to it. So it's an amended subdivision. It's amended subdivision. That's all it is to me, you know? And um, I can live with if that. If there's new terms and concepts that I've just not been, you know, privy to, then I, I, you know, I'm happy to be educated, but it seems to me that that's all it is. Well, it, it's all it is, only the way we're doing it is different than it would have been a while ago. But it really is not a whole new subdivision. In my view, the, the, yeah, it, it's being, it, it, maybe it's being processed a little bit differently than what we're used to, but I might say that, it, that, that we're, at, we're, we're really benefiting from this unusual approach, if you will, because we're, the board, before I recently joined it, has been privy to all, a lot of detail that goes into the full build-out that they otherwise would not have been. Am I speaking out of turn? Or no, 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 again, my guy. So that, that's all good. It's all good. But, you know, for me, this looks like an amended subdivision. But I would be, at the same time, I'd be very first one to agree with Jay. Right. We had made a complete preliminary subdivision application yep. for the full build-out, and it was during that review process where, where Jay said, so we did not have preliminary, preliminary subdivision approval for the full build-out. It was at that point where I pulled back, and then I think that next month submitted for phase one. But again, I, I tried to be as, as clear as I could, which again, I understand this was 12 months ago, that we were, you know, it was just a, a timing issue was all it really came down to be. Okay. So, so, all right, well. What's the problem with it being, have you got a problem with it being just an amended? I have no problem, Susan. I don't know where we're coming no, from. No, I have I, absolutely no, no problem with it being an amended. I just want to make sure that, uh, and, and I, I don't have the background to really speak eloquently on this, but I just want to make sure that we don't, to, a lot of people's hard work and analysis and effort, six months down the road, there's something that comes up that says that we didn't proceed, you know, properly and legally. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so. And I'll leave it up to, you know, Jay and, and the experts and, and Sean and, and those that make a living, uh, you know, analyzing such things. But it just seems to me that what's been approved is what we're calling phase one, a 23 lot subdivision, and, we, and there's now additional land surrounding it. We want to add to it. There's connectivity. It looks all real good, and it's an amended subdivision. I'm comfortable with that, Jay. I, but I'll get together with you, but you know, I want to, I, that certainly works for us. I have no issue with that whatsoever. But does that address all of the issues? That yeah, we have? I think what I'm hearing Mr. Wood say, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is, you know, really what we need to look at is, a new. We're looking at, you know, rather than an 88 or 80 acre parcel, we're now looking at a 60 acre parcel. Let's start there, recognizing we have this sort of master plan that happened beforehand, but we're mm -hmm. starting starting with the 60 acres and adding on to the existing 20. And, 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 and yes, that, that's exactly. the starting point. We're not at second base, as I think Sean was referring to. He was a, a bit ahead of where 
And I think that will work to your benefit and our benefit because you've already done a lot. I don't think I, I don't envision us taking steps backwards by just approaching it like using like, these kinds I, of terms. I think Jay hit right on. I think you know. I, I was round in second. I was headed for third. I mean, there was no doubt. I mean, I was, you know, I was right. I, th I thought, from my perspective, we were further ahead, obviously, than, and again, I probably should have thought Susan and Mike are just on the board. They haven't got any history here, and, you know. But, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, feel free to educate me and change my mind, and we'll move forward. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to wrap my arms around, you know, I think this is as large a subdivision as, you know, the town will typically see. So I, I think it's, it's important that we just proceed carefully. This is the land, was, is it not, a, a few years ago that mm -hmm. uh, yep. was earmarked for a uh, single-use building, one building? And, no, uh, no, it wasn't just single-use. It was retirement camp. It was a Piper Shores right. Right. East. Actually, even before then, I think they were right. even talking right. about a school. Exactly. Yeah. And we had, and there were fears of, you know, uh, <coughs> traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, <laughs> look what we got now. I mean, and we predicted this. We knew that, you know, well. That's what the neighborhood said they wanted, Mike, right. as you may recall. Exactly. So, um, yeah. to um, mm -hmm. to the abutters concerns, uh, Gruber, I, I have to ask, if we are to say that this is a proposal to amend an existing subdivision, then should we not pause and ask what kind of work is being done on what will eventually, and I know in the applicant's view, hopefully be Leighton Farm Road? I mean, what kind of work is being done? There? I thought they cut trees. And again, I, 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 I can't. Okay, right, all right. So I say. The applicant will be here next work, time. Is that kind of work to staff? Is that kind of work permissible in such a? Yeah, I can, what I can do uh, based on the uh, concerns that we heard, we can ask our third party inspector to go out and take a look uh, to be sure that what has been done, um, you know, is, is that stormwater is being appropriately taken care of. So th there may well be, uh, we're hearing that there's issues, so let's have our third party inspector go out and, and take a and look. And I'm not suggesting that the applicant is uh, is doing something in you know in, in the uh, the dark of night to evade detection. All I'm saying is maybe the applicant is proceeding along the lines of thinking that this is one big subdivision that's all been already approved and proceeding, you know, in a in a way that maybe in my view really isn't the norm if you're looking at a, uh, a subdivision that's been approved and you're asking to, to amend it by expanding it. That's all. Again, Mike, I don't think any, there's certainly been no infrastructure associated with anything outside of phase one. Uh, well, at the minimum, I think, Sean, and, and, I, and I think most people would probably agree that, that you talked about what, what the end state will look like. You know, the, the sheet flow will be taken care of, the water will be, you know, uh, Catched and deposited into, you know, well-designed stormwater uh, ponds and whatnot, and that's all well and good. But that could be quite a while down the road. No pun intended, but it could be. So in the meantime, is there any way that you can flow that sheet water away from this property, like with, you know, maybe simple approaches such as like straws? Or Bales of straw. Or whatnot. Uh, again, I have to take a look. The only way I can move water in a different direction, obviously, than where it's going today, is is to get a piece of equipment out there and move it. Um, you know, in terms of just making sure from an erosion standpoint, you know, obviously that's a, a simpler process to make sure obviously we're not getting, but it sounds like we're talking more of, you know, an issue of, of, of runoff. Um, yeah, that's what, I, that, that's what I was referring to. But I, I don't know how and to I, redirect I, runoff, although. And I haven't know. been there, so I don't know what the, uh, the previous conditions were <coughs> like that. In theory, this, this, uh, this impact would not have been there had it not been for the work that's been done, that's all. Well, I, I'm certainly going to take know. it from these folks here that that's, and this ain't the scene more runoff, so uh, I, will, I will say that I agree with that. Um, now, you said um, work out the lease with the FAA. You said that that lease expires in 2017? Yes. Now, uh, what, is the, what, what is the ultimate? I mean, is that tower... Gonna it's got a lot more use, I think, 40 years ago when they first put it up. I think right now it's just a a, a fixed point of navigation. That, you know, they know there's a. I, I you think know, it's a communication stop. I don't think it is anymore, to be honest with you. I think it was. I don't think it is any longer. 
So you think it's just a, a stick? I think it's really just a six point. I truly do. Okay. All right. Well, that'll be easy. I mean, back when I worked for the FAA, that that was actually a uh, infrastructure that was used. Yes. I, but you, you, I think it's outlived its usefulness, at least from what the initial design was. That at least is my understanding, Mike. And you know better than no, I. No, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, things change so fast, and I even I haven't been privy to uh, what its real use is for over five years. So it used to be a remote transmitter site. But do we know for sure? Because I'm hearing we no, think it no, is. no, no. But Sean certainly they're going to look into it because, I, you know, if the lease runs out in 2017, the lease runs out in 2017. I guess at that point I don't care what it's used for at the end of the exactly. day. Exactly. And we're at 2015. So my guess is that <laughs> if it was an important piece of infrastructure, then they would have already signed or, you know, moved moved forward. They're not going to wait to. I wouldn't think. We have had discussions with the FAA at the Portland Airport, yeah. uh, and just in terms of what they were utilizing to get the height of it. In terms of, so, again, my understanding based upon those discussions, and again, I'd be more than happy to research it again, uh, was that it was right at this point in time it was just basically used as a fixed point of navigation. Well, it was mostly just a lead into my next, uh, you know, obviously you're doing the whole, uh, if it ceases to exist someday, they take it down, and then this will just be a, another a building lot potentially, correct? Uh, only with approval from the planning board. <laughs> 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 it'll, be, it'll be amended subdivision. There'll be another amendment to the subdivision, yes. And what we're talking about, Mike, now is because, again, uh, that we're actually be just to confuse the issue even more, Please. is that between the tower lot and those first two lots on the left, those are actually just going to be reserved by the applicant. So we'll come in for an amendment after the fact once the whole tower thing in 2017 or whatever gets worked out. Right, and that's not confusing to me at all. <laughs> I mean, that makes perfect sense. You've already drawn out the lots, and you know it's reserved and uh, for future use or whatnot. I mean, that's fine. Um, so, uh, where are we? Now? Is this a sketch plan? On Obviously, this? yes. <laughs> <laughs> it better be. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I did. If this is a if this is a final subdivision, we are in no. such deep no, I do. So, uh, uh, I don't have a motion ready for that. No. So staff has no issues with the length of the roads. We have the two entrances and exits that are going to be shown. So there's not going to be any issues with uh, length of road. Right. Um, are there any, I know you spoke about it on uh, um, Elmwood, John, so forgive me, but uh, did, did you speak about sidewalks and things of that nature within the development? We have sidewalks throughout the whole development <coughs> on one side of the road. Okay. okay, there's an existing sidewalk on the opposite side of Elmwood. Right. Okay, so obviously in terms of to connect that, I, I certainly never saw any need to have a sidewalk on the opposite side of Elmwood. I, you know, why? Uh, there's already a sidewalk there, so. Didn't that come up, though? Um, I think we had a general, but again, I think we had a general discussion with this, but I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> John, you're fine. Stop. But we did. We had a discussion uh, on the reasons why a sidewalk on the left side of Elmwood made better sense than on the right, because at the time the conditions said that. But now I would pause and say, and maybe, maybe we still come to the same conclusion, but I believe the conditions at the time certainly did not have a, a 99 lot subdivision where you'd have people that might want to make use of a sidewalk on the right side of Elmwood. But today the conditions are going to be different. Or in a few short months or years, the conditions will be different. So I just say, I respectfully ask you to just not take that off the table completely, that's all. Uh, uh, but again, Mike, you can walk on one side. Of, there's a sidewalk on one side of the street within the subdivision, but you step out onto Elmwood, then you need a sidewalk on both sides of the street? I don't understand where that rationale. And again, for... Well, let me ask. Let Only me that's going to connect from here to here. Let me ask you this question, Sean. Why? Why? What purpose does a sidewalk on the left side of Elmwood serve? To walk on. <laughs> you have to cross the street. You have to cross the street and walk on it. So you're going to cross the street and walk on it. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, I, I still think that the conditions that existed at the time that we talked about a, left, a sidewalk on the left side of Elmwood, a lot of it was there was no need. There was no. There, there were. There were it, it there were no people that you could envision needing to use it. So why go on the right side? Because the folks that were going to use it already lived on the left side of Elmwood for the most part. But now the conditions have changed. So. All right. I, 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 I appreciate that. Okay. Um, what about the buffering? Is there buffering, existing buffering? I know this has already been approved. I'm just curious 
the buffering between the Honeywell House and the... Uh, it was deeply discussed. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, again, when it... On the board. <laughs> <laughs> Landscape lady. I mean, what was there? I mean, again, because I, I don't want to make this, this, you know, there was a, a set of trees, and then there was actually an old woods road that went down through there. And, you know, right. so, I mean, we left basically from the woods road to the property line, we left those okay. alone. I'm just curious what the uh, outlay. Okay. Okay. Um, is, is there any, um, did the board walk this property? In the snow? We walked it back when it was the, the, the prior uh, okay. All right. proposal. So I, I can do this. Five or six I, I'll, years ago. I'll do this on my own then. Is yeah. there ways to navigate? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Okay. All right. I appreciate your patience, Sean. No, not at all. And again, yeah. I, you know, again, it's, what else? It's Sean trying to get ahead of himself. I mean, that never happens, as you know. So I'm not criticizing that. In fact, I'm applauding that. I think, I think maybe in my comments, one thing maybe wasn't wasn't heard, in that the way I see this, whether we end up defining it this way or not, doesn't really matter to me. At the end of the day, the way I see this is we have an opportunity. I have an opportunity to see a subdivision that's already been approved. Well designed, as always, by Sebago Technics, represented by Sean Frank, and now I see a, um, a budding area, budding land that wishes to connect to it, and I'm happy calling it an amended subdivision. But you've done a lot of the homework that typically we have to wait till now to do and to analyze, but, but that's already been done, and it's available for me to catch up and read up. So I think it's all good. But I just, I, I was just confused about the terms here. I just want to make uh, and no, sure. and again, I appreciate that. And I will say, is, and again, I, you know, uh, this board, I mean, you know, the, there was a lot of, of, of back and forth with the board as well in terms of, you know, I was very happy with 112 lots, just to be perfectly honest with you. So, I mean, we might as well start with, but again, you know, certainly working hard with the board here, and the board certainly had a lot of uh, information that we took to that wound up with the, the 99 lots that we got to. But uh, uh, absolutely, 23 lots, final approval. An amended subdivision, I guess, sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mike. Ron? Anything else? Uh, yes. Um, following up on Mike, in addition to the sidewalks, did you see this from Woodward and uh, I did. Cohen and their concerns about how the stormwater management? I think the biggest issue is the fact that we have, you wind up with some of the conveyance and treatment factors on the lots. And again, I don't know how to get around that any longer with the fact that we need to treat 95% of the impervious areas. I think uh, the last time I was here, there was a subdivision just before me where we had the exact same conversation because they were in the exact same situation. Um, it, when you have to treat 95% and that includes all the roofs for the individual houses, uh, you wind up collecting that on the individual lots, transporting it across those individual lots, um, and treating it on the individual lot. So we certainly tried to minimize that to the extent possible, but it certainly is there. And unfortunately, I think, you know, unfortunately, I just think that, you know, that is going to be the norm from here on out for residential subdivisions. And I don't think, you know, in reading through what in current comments, they, uh, they recognize that that is becoming the new norm. Um, and the way I sort of read their comment is just being sure that those easements are duly noted on the subdivision plan that, you know, if we get to the point of a homeowner association documents being drafted that those are fully vetted uh, by the town so um, I think there's a recognition that yes this you know this is the new norm but it is a new norm so we need to be sure we're codifying all the and documenting all the, the correct interests. But John what about Bill Bray's comments you've seen those two? I have in fact and again it's I think I lost Bill a little bit, unfortunately, as well, because we did, in fact, have the traffic movement permit from uh, from DOT, and uh, and again, I think I had previously responded to Bill's comments from last year, uh, but then he backed off to phase one, which you know certainly made all the sense in the world. So I think he has the information now. It's 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 a matter of him obviously reviewing it, and I guarantee you there'll still be some uh, uh, some back and forth with Bill as well. Okay, I guess that's all I have for the moment. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Well, I, I certainly appreciate all the discussion around process, and particularly, you know, some of it is, some of it gets into semantics, but it ultimately is important to understand and that we're all, you know, generally in agreement on what it is that we're actually doing. And uh, I think the way that uh, Mike articulated it is, is logical and it makes sense, and I'll, I'll certainly defer to 
staff uh, in making sure that however we proceed is is, uh, is appropriate in terms of the ordinance and the process. Uh, but I think we've been able to kind of clarify that for the most part. Um, in terms of comments about the, uh, the the development itself, again, we've discussed a lot of this, uh, but um, I'd appreciate the app we could continue to look at, at mitigating or minimizing um, impacts on wetlands. Uh, you know, it's understood that where there where there appear to be impacts are you know generally where there where it's a roadway and, and crossings and things like that. We still want to try to make sure that we we minimize that impact. Um, you know, Susan lays claim to be uh, rightfully so to being the uh, the landscape lady. I think maybe I've become the sidewalk guy. <laughs> and um, I just really want to reiterate. I mean, if I had my druthers, I'd love to see sidewalks on both sides of the street within the development. Um, I consider myself fortunate to live in a neighborhood that um, I guess I don't know what went wrong, but we have sidewalks on both sides of the street, and, <laughs> and it seems to work well. I know that it's. Yeah, I understand why owners and developers try to you know, sometimes balk at it. Um, you know, it is what it is. We have vetted it, and I understand we, you know, having the sidewalks on one side of the street in the neighborhood. It's fine. It's it's one thing if it's a loop. Um, I think I, I would uh, echo what uh, Mr. Wood said and asking you to keep an open mind about the, the off-site sidewalks, including the sidewalk on the, uh, the development side of, of uh, Elmwood. Um, possibly a staff has suggested uh, thinking about this in terms of the lieu of the recreation fee. Um, I think, you know, it's, there are valid points sometimes we, we look at, at proposals or projects where there's a, kind of a so-called sidewalk to nowhere and the town maybe is trying to stitch together sidewalks along section of Route 1 or something like that. This to me is a case where there's a real, I think, logical um, benefit or real tangible benefit to having having uh, those sidewalks. So I hope that, you know, that the applicant will continue to, uh, to consider that. Um, we, uh, I think, pretty well covered the tower lot variable and I'll look forward to seeing how that evolves. Uh, and I appreciate the clarification around the, the parking uh, at the, uh, the near end of phase one. I understand that you know that won't be a won't be a uh, a lot of space, but there'll be some some access there. And um, appreciate the applicants' willingness to to work with staff and and the, the butter on on the drainage issues. And we we do really appreciate that input. Um, Maybe in some ways a good thing that we had the rain last night to kind of highlight that because we had been dry for a little while. Um, but I'm sure you'll, you'll look into what all is going on there and what can be done. Like I say, I, I, the applicant's out of town, but I'll certainly let him know. And I'm, I think he's come to see you folks before, and I'll ask him obviously to come see you again. So okay. uh, he's out right now, so obviously. But as soon as he gets back, I'll ask him to go see. Well, forgive me if it was already mentioned, but um, do you what what is your what is your your thinking? time-wise, when you think you might be able to get back to us. I'm, uh, I'm a little backwards right now. So, uh, you know, I was thinking Monday, but that sounds a little bit, uh, uh, so let me, why don't I get to together with Jay and uh, <coughs> we'll pull together a clean game plan. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. No, well, we, we, we can't do any more public comment right now, but I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure staff would be happy to talk with you and the applicant is open to it as well. Thank you. Okay. We have a town planner's report. Uh, yeah, I have two things to report on. Um, one, uh, just make note for any board members who weren't aware yet, but Jim Wendell, the town engineer, has uh, resigned his position, uh, so he's no longer with us. Um, excuse me. Uh, can we maybe take the conversation outside? Or just wait? All right, thank you. Um, so yes, as I was, as I was saying, uh, Jim Wendell, town engineer, has resigned his position, is no longer with the town. Um, so, um, you know, at, at this point, staff is trying to pick up a lot of those pieces until we have someone new come on board. Um, you know, so certainly um, that will occur, and 
in due time, but in the, in the time being, we're, we're doing our best to stay on top of issues such were raised tonight, and we will do our best to stay on top of those things. Including the railroad. <laughs> I don't know who's doing the railroad, Mr. Major. <laughs> that one didn't come to my desk. Um, another item I uh, want to poll board members on, if you don't have an answer tonight, that's fine, but just to give you an awareness, we have received um, an application proposal by Vesta Housing for a contract zone um, oh. at the Southgate House in the Dunstan uh, area of town. Mm -hmm. They want to do a project there. Mm -hmm. It will require a contract zone. What they're looking to do will require a contract zone um, process. Staff has reviewed their initial application. There's a multi-step process to a contract zone. The first step is staff review the application for completeness. We found their application ostensibly complete. We asked for a few subtle tweaks, but for the most part, there's enough information to get the, the ball rolling. And the first step in getting the ball rolling is a joint meeting with the council and planning board. We are hoping to schedule that joint hearing for May 6th. Um, so if folks know your availability tonight, uh, please let Karen or I know, and I will be sending around an email uh, to that effect as well. If you don't know, that's fine, but we would like to have an answer pretty soon as May 6th is around the corner, and we do need to notice these things and so on and such forth. So, um, so just a heads up on that, um, and that is all I have to report this evening. Thanks, Jay. We have an administrative amendment report. We do not have anything to report this evening. Any planning board correspondence? The board did receive two letters. Um, just make note, they were both related to the um, suburb subdivision that came before the board as a sketch plan a meeting or two ago. I think it was two meetings ago at this point. One from a uh, Mr. Shumway and another from a Christopher and Elizabeth uh, I'm not the new. Um, I may have mispronounced that name, but um, you will have received those, and those will be entered into the record. Um, not sure when that application will be back, um, but that's what I had for you. We do have those. Thank you. Any planning board comments? Well, I, I, I'd be remiss uh, not to wish uh, Jim Wendell well. Um, uh, worked with him for all nine years. I was previously on the board and um, certainly uh, in between when I was on the council. Always did a great job and uh, was quick to take care of any issues and problems and he was <clears throat> very good at what he did. So it comes as a surprise and a little bit of a disappointment, but uh, I'm sure that uh, he started out quite well as he did all his interactions with the planning board and, uh, and the engineering department. So if you do run into him, wish him well. I don't think I, I have his contact number. I'd like to echo that exactly what Thank Mike you. just said. My dealings with him have just been super. I'll, go, I'll, I'll look at that as well, and, and also thank staff uh, now and in advance for the uh, added uh, efforts to, to wear that hat and try to uh, cover that in the meantime. Well, all right. Uh, I will move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. We do have a mic.